lavish to the day that I die. Spring has thawed out the long bitter weather. The water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Beaver Kill River. Might even catch and release one too. Well, some folks like horses, some cats or dogs. Me, I like fishing with a rod and a fly. Yes, fishing is a favorite pastime of mine. Well, life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. A trout is rising in the far end. I make a false cast and take my aim. I feel so much better And if he doesn't I'll feel no shame Stoneflies and tennis And the riffles are plenty Mayflies courting On fragrant breeze And cedar wax wings Come down from the heaven Wait for their dinner Up in my dreams The water is cold and my waders leave And it's raining now On my favorite stream I'll bear it on Just fish with a feather So when I sleep I will have a sweet dream And life is good When I'm wading a river It gets even better When I cast a fly So have you taken any fly fishing lessons? No, but uh, how hard could it be, you know? <laughs> wow, here it is, huh? It's great. Wow. Well, let's go, huh? Okay, let's go. Sorry. Sorry. Can I get a little help right here? A little help? I think I got one. I think I got one. Come to pot. Come to pot with me. Oh, look. I'll tell you, I don't think there's any fish in this room. No? hours and there's not a... Ah! You guys look like you could use some help. Hey man, what, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? You're crazy. You guys know this is private property? We know what we're doing, all right? Just, Just get lost, yeah, okay? get out of here. All right then. I'll catch you later. Yeah, much later. See you around, buddy. catching them, but I hate <laughs> cleaning them.
Oh, hey folks, how you doing? Just fooling around on another guitar song there, fishing song. And uh, welcome to my new studio. I just redesigned everything here. Got my Mac face in the windows here. Got my speakers here and uh, got a lot of room here to, to work on things and do different stuff. So um, this is the second show of season six and uh, my name is Curtis Mayfly. And of course, as always, I welcome you to today's show. And I hope you stay with me as the season progresses because I have lots of things to cover. Um, last summer, I spent uh, a week up in Maine at a youth camp. And at the moment, I'm in the process of putting together a youth camp for here in New York State. And uh, if you want more information about that, you can go to my website and look under uh, Trout Waters Youth Camp, there's a, a link to a website there that will take you to a website that has all kinds of information about the Trout Waters Youth Camp. This is a special camp, it's fly fishing only, catch and release only. If you're interested in fly fishing, this is the place to go. It's for 14 to 17 year old kids, it's co-ed, and we'll be staying at Land of the Vikings down near Hale Eddy. Um, and we're, the whole week is going to be focusing on conservation issues and techniques being in, in place uh, to protect our habitat, cold water habitats in the wa Delaware watershed. So the, but the important thing is we're also going to be having fun. We're going to be doing it by learning how to cast, how to tie flies, how to, uh, and how to fish. And we're hoping to have a major sponsor. I'm still... Uh, not sure who that may be, but uh, uh, there's a town just north of Binghamton that uh, has a pretty big company that makes all kinds of fly fishing stuff, and they may be helping us out. But I can't say anything definite for right now. But uh, the main thing is go to that website if you're interested in learning how to fly fish and you're in the age of 14 to 17. The selection process, because we're only taking 12 kids, the selection process amounts to having writing a nice essay and I'm not gonna correct you on English errors and spelling uh, the essay is about why you want to learn how to fly fish and what conservation means to you uh, conservation of our habitats and, and wildlife and uh, wild places so write a it, it's, the people who are going to be chosen are the ones who are most sincere in their writing if it sounds like a manufactured letter, it probably is, um, or not written by you. I want, I want it from you, in your own words, why you want to learn how to fly fish and um, what conservation means to you. I also require that you give me a teacher or counselor reference, somebody you know at the school, a, a science teacher, um, a guidance counselor, somebody I can call in, in uh and just check up and make sure you are who you say you are and, and, and you're that interested. Um, but again, today's show, let's move on. Uh, but again, we got lots of things we're going to cover this year, so you want to stay with me. And of, of course, I got the usual uh, funny films and serious films, and we're going to be talking about salmon. Uh, I have that old uh, Snake River salmon. Uh, they're still in peril out west. Uh, there's all kinds of things I'm going to have on this show, but today I'm going to talk about materials um, and uh, tools for fly, fly tying. So let, let's go right to that and uh, take it. Okay, here we go, folks. We're over here at the fly tying area and the studios here. And... Um, Having more fun than a person should be allowed to have, like Rush Limbaugh says. Anyway, what I'm going to talk about here is some of the basic tools you need to tie flies. It's you don't need all the gadgets. I mean, I've got I've got millions and millions of tools. I've got every gadget. The reason I have every gadget is because I have to try them all out. Okay, um, so I can tell you what you need and what you don't need. Uh, you know, hair stackers, whatever. I have just about everything in here. Um, you don't need all this stuff. There's a threader. 
Uh, you don't need that. I'm not even going to talk about that. So, but uh, the basic tools you need, and uh, I always tell people when you're starting to learn how to tie flies or, or getting involved, um, a vise is very important. And uh, um, aqua pliers are important. Um, but a vise, a vise is important. Here's your uh, uh, cheaper model vise. This is a good vise. This is a Thompson uh, Pro Vise uh, AA or something like that, I think they call it. Uh, this is a standard vise. They're found in, this has a pedestal. I like the pedestal because you can take it with you on your trips and you have a nice place to fly or you have a nice fly tying vest that's, or vise that's portable. Anyway, this has a cam jaws that when you lock it down it locks in the fly, uh, the fly hook. The fly hook can come loose on this one sometimes if you pull too much and the jaws are kind of funny. Up here I have a whole selection of different vices that uh, are older you know and some are newer but um, the best vice I found for all around tie fl fly tying is a Viking or, or the Kingfisher. This is the Dyna King Kingfisher and this is allows you to rotate the fly so you can work on both sides of the fly. It has a nice cam operation where it locks into place and it has the materials clip here so you can uh, clamp uh, material in there. Uh, but that's one of the vices I use 99% of the time. They also make more expensive models. This one's about 139. Uh, I don't recommend this if you're just beginning. I would go with a Thompson, uh, you know, 20 to 30 dollar vice is, is going to get you started, okay? And uh, some of the kits you buy have a, a fly tying, uh, has a fly tying vice in them, and they're about a ten dollar vice. So you're going to get what you pay for with a vice usually. Now this Dyna King holds the hooks pretty well. Um, and it holds a various different sizes, but again, that's a hundred and thirty nine dollar vice, and they go up from there. There's vices that are five six hundred dollars, and it depends on if you're doing saltwater flies or uh, that kind of stuff. So salmon flies. Um, some of the other basic tools you need is you'll need a nice um, uh, bobbin. This holds your thread. It applies tension to the spool so that. It has the right tension when you're wrapping the fly. Uh, very important. Uh, this is a Dr. Schlick and it's uh, got ceramic material in it and that keeps you from breaking the thread. That can be very frustrating sometimes. Beginner fly tires will buy a real cheap bobbin uh, to hold the thread and what happens is uh, your thread breaks uh, and you get frustrated. So. Uh, you know, spend another, spend ten bucks and get a good, good bob, and you'll, you'll, it'll last a lifetime probably. Um, hackle pliers are used. These are spring steel, and there's a little rubber uh, thing on the end here, and it's not just for hackle; it's for other material uh, to wrap around a fly. Very important to have one of those. Um, a bodkin uh, is essentially, it can be as simple as a piece of wood with a needle in it. That's all it is, is a needle. Uh, this is a long one. It's octagon, it's brass. I like the weight. You set it down, it doesn't roll because it's octagon in shape. It also has a hole at the end that's tapered here so you can do half hitches. So this is, you can pick out material and you can also do a half hitch to tie off around the head or, or something else. So that's, uh, that's a good tool and the price varies on these. Uh, the good folks at Gander Mountain have a nice fly tying supply there and you can also find these online at various fly shops uh, around the country. Hook and Hackle is one up in Plattsburgh that's got a nice delivery. Uh, Netcraft and, and folks like that. Uh, another thing you're going to want is scissors. And I've, see, I've watched different fly tires over the years and uh, I've learned that uh, you want big finger loops here, okay? And the reason is, is that most people, when they, they use scissors, they use them like this, and then they're in the way, okay? 
uh, what I found is that some of the professional fly tires hold it on their third finger, okay, and they can cut material. They're very stable because it's resting on their finger, and they can fold it in their hand and continue working while they're still holding the scissors, and they're always right there. So that's a nice little thing to know. You can work on your fly and nip, 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 okay? So that, that's a nice feature with the big loop. Uh, get my other pair of scissors here. These are the same ones. These are uh, gold-plated handles. These are nice. Uh, again, uh, these, this pair is a little shorter, as you can see. And so uh, if it even hides better in your hand. You got to be careful that point is sharp, okay? So you got to kind of watch what you're doing. Now this, this pair of scissors has little jaws in there that are good for cutting wire and things. So again, you want to look at your scissors very well. This was a $19 pair of scissors, I think, something like that. And this came in a set of three for uh, $20. So scissors can be very expensive, but again, I've had this set um, for probably 15, 20 years, and they're still as sharp as the day I had them, and these are brand new. So, anyway, that's some of the tools, okay? Uh, oh, I got some more tools here. I got a hair stacker. Hair stacker is just a hollow tube uh, with a, another tube that goes in it. You put hair in there and tap it, not three times on the ceiling, and then it then you pull the hair out and it's all lined up nice and straight. That's called a hair stacker. Um, these are great if you're tying caddis flies, elk hair caddis flies. You got to have one of these. Uh, you can also use one of these for, uh, and they come in different sizes. But you can also use one of these for uh, um, hair hair bug, you know, hair bug flies or things like that. So you you always want to line up that stuff. Uh, this is a hair packer. I never used one of these until I read a book about uh, stacking hair. You know how they make those uh, bass flies that are really deer hair all bunched up? Well, what you're doing is you're spinning the deer, deer hair on the hook. You put it on there loosely, wrap it, put some more on there, wrap it. And what you do is you put these holes over the eye and you pack that fur right up nice and tight. So that's a nice handy tool and that's something that I've used uh, many times when I'm doing those types of flies. You can't really tie those flies without it. Here's another tool and I'll show you more about this later uh, as we get into tying flies. But this is a whip finish uh, knot tire. Um, it's hard to show without a fly but uh, this is a tool that you may or may not want. I'll actually show you um, how to use this down the road but I'll also be uh, uh, showing you how to do the whip finish without it. Why have the tool if you don't need it? You know, I'm not a very good salesman. Uh, less is more, okay? You don't need all this crap. Um, I have it just because I, I talk about it, I teach it, and, and so on and so forth. So, now without further ado, let's get into some materials. Now, I've got a whole bunch of stuff everywhere here, and some of the things you're going to need is perhaps like turkey, some turkey quills and things like that. You're going to want some pheasant sword tails. Uh, you're going to want uh, some hackle, okay? This one's been picked out pretty well there, a little bald spot, just like my head, see it? Um, but this one here is, is, is a grizzly, and I recommend at least starting with a grizzly and a brown. And I've got a box here with hundreds of them somewhere. Yeah, right here. You're going to need some hackle. You're not going to need this much. Here's a cream. Here's a smoky Dunn. Uh, I would recommend starting out with these two colors right here because a lot of the flies you're going to mix. You're just going to use a couple of Grizzly or you're going to use one of these and one of these or you're just going to use 
two of these or maybe just one of these and again there's a bald spot you can see where I've been tying what size flies I've been tying and these vary in price these can, these are one of the most expensive things you can get uh, selection of what's in here I don't know what's in there I don't think I want to know um, black marabou uh, we'll talk about dubbing uh, but you can see I got all kinds of oh here's a uh, what is this oh this is a pheasant skin somebody gave me a pheasant skin and uh, I don't know if I want it in there I want to let it stay out um, here's some elk hair uh, there's deer hair there's all kinds of things uh, that you can buy uh, to tie flies but the materials the main materials are going to be threads you're going to want some good fly tying thread 6 aught, 8 aught. Um, I use olive for most of my flies uh, I find that that matches matches uh, live insects the best you're going to need black though and you're going to need some light colors uh, yellows uh, like this for your uh, light Cahills and your sulfurs and I try to match the thread to the dubbing here's some dubbing this is uh, beaver dubbing and this comes in a nice pack of uh, 12 different colors and you can see uh, a lot of these are fairly empty I got some more back here with different colors because you can never have enough enough uh, dubbing in different colors so here's a box with with sulfur down here and then uh, rusty spinners and some other things in here so you're gonna want these 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 run about ten to fifteen dollars a piece for these packs uh, you can also buy dubbing in single packs like so you know two or three bucks um, I like these pop packs because uh, you go somewhere you just take one of these and it's got all your colors in it that you need that you could use more dubbing more turkey what else we got in here more dubbing look at that look at all that dubbing do I have enough dubbing uh, here's a whole bunch of dubbing look at that uh, that's good stuff right there uh, you can't have enough of this stuff I suppose you could have too much but you can never have enough does that make any sense Oh, there's a nice uh, uh, light Cahill, and the genetic feathers are are just so nice now. I can take one of these these feathers here and tie several flies with it, uh, and it's just awesome. Now that's the basics of materials. You know, you're going to want dubbing, you're going to want some hackle, and you're going to want some thread. Another thing I use a lot these days is is uh, microfibers this is uh, a good uh, material I use for tails it's basically like paintbrush bristles I guess and uh, that makes your tail and I use a uh, polypropylene uh, a material to make post to make parachutes this is good stuff here so I have a bunch of this and I have uh, oh, here's some CDC. You, if you're getting into CDC flies, that's a whole other ball game. But for right now, you're going to need some hackle and some dubbing and some thread. And you'll be able to tie. Um, you may want some tinsel and a few things. You'll see when I get into tying the first flies, I think I'm going to do a hair's ear nymph and, uh, uh, to start off with next week. So that'll be next week. Uh, we'll get into top fly tying. So uh, I guess that's it for today. Um, and again, anytime if you have any questions or comments, please uh, email me at avkurt at mac.com. Uh, visit my website. Uh, it's up there on the screen. And uh, we'll see you next week. The hills are alive with the sound of music. <laughs> <laughs>